Karine Jean-Pierre, White House Press Secretary. Karine, welcome back to The Sunday Show. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So let's start with Jackson, Mississippi. President Biden signed an emergency declaration and Friday um, said on Friday the governor, quote, has to act on the crisis. Is he frustrated? Is the president frustrated with Mississippi's elected officials' response to this to this crisis? So what I'll say is this. Um, as you know, the FEMA director, administrator, uh, Criswell, was on the ground with Mitch Landrew as well, who, who uh, is the um, uh, infrastructure coordinator, mm -hmm. to talk to officials on the ground, to assess what is happening, and to be as helpful as we can be. When the president uh, got the declaration, emergency declaration from the governor, he surged that assistance because he understood understands as president how critical and important it is to get the assistance to the American people. And so that's what you saw a couple of days ago. Look, you know, as far as uh, who's to blame, look, it is we, we're trying to get the information. We're trying to get the assistance as as much as we can, as quickly as we can uh, to the people of, of Mississippi, in particular Jackson, in this in this uh, mm -hmm. particular instance. 2.8 million bottles of water was uh, was given on Thursday. We have FEMA on the ground. We have EPA officials on the ground. We have the Army Corps on the ground. And this is something that we know as a federal government how to do, how to help the people who are in need. And we're just going to continue to do that. Let's talk about the president. President's speech on Thursday. He used the phrase MAGA Republicans more than a dozen times. But at this point, is there a difference between traditional mainstream Republicans and those who follow Donald Trump? He believes so, and he made that very clear in his speech as well. Look, what you heard from the president on Thursday was he was speaking from the heart about what is currently happening, this inflection point, as he called it, uh, in this country. We need to continue, and he is going to protect our democracy, protect our values, protect our freedoms, protect our rights. And he sees that it, all of those things that I just laid out are under assault. So he is calling on Democrats, independents, mainstream Republicans uh, to really come together and make that decision and stand together to make their voices heard so that we can protect what is the most important to our value as a country. And that's what you heard from this president. And I'll just add, if, if folks have not watched his speech, they should go online and take a look and listen or read it on, uh, go to our website. It is such an empowerful, impassionate speech, as you know, Jonathan. And it was, again, <coughs> You okay? Do you want some water? No, no, no I'm fine. <laughs> okay. Keep talking. Okay. <clears throat> and um, so we just really want to make sure people <clears throat> get an opportunity uh, to to hear from the president himself. The president believes that he is the strongest voice when it comes to the. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I don't want you to pass out. No, on no, me. no. You know it's fine. Go on, Kareem. <laughs> Just the last thing I want to say, as president, he believes that he has uh, the strong, he should be the strongest voice on democracy, and that's what he's using. He's using his voice uh, to lift that up, to show what the inflection point that we're in at this current moment, mm -hmm. and how much it is important to protect those values. My apologies for the, for the, for no, the coughing. Okay. You know, when you, sure you, okay. you swallow and it goes down the wrong pipe. I know CPR, so I know. Oh, well, that's good. That is really good to know. So, so know. I want to get back to something you said a moment ago, yeah. where, you know, the president president was speaking from the heart. I have long said the president is never more clear than when he, when he is talking about the soul of the nation. Absolutely. And that's what this speech was. But I'm wondering why it took the president so long to go there to name names. The president's really good friend, Senator Chris Coons, also of Delaware, told The Post, quote, I think it was only it was only reluctantly that he chose to give such a clear and forceful warning about what lies ahead. Does that explain it? So I have to say, and, and uh, Senator Coons is a friend, as you know, as you just stated, and really respect him. So want to just say this. The president has laid out. This is not the first time he's giving a soul of a nation speech. He wrote about it back in August of 2017, about where we were as a country then, uh, especially after what we saw in Charlottesville. We have talked, the two of us have talked about that. He's talked about January 6th and what he saw that day, what we all saw that day, this insurrection, this mob that came to attack our democracy and our law enforcement officers. And he called that out then when we have seen 
seen legislation, extreme legislation from MAGA Republicans, as he said, he used those words uh, on the Senate uh, to cut and to put on the chopping block Medicare and Social Security. He's called them out. Uh, he's talked about it as well uh, when we saw the Dobbs decision from the Supreme Court to take away rights uh, from women, a 50-year constitutional right, nearly 50 years of constitutional rights that we have had here in this country. He's called that out. Uh, so he has taken many, plenty of times uh, to call out where we are with the extreme, that extreme part of the Republican Party. And he will continue to do that, which we call, as you know, MAGA Republicans, mm -hmm. that MAGA yep. ideology.